10 years, eh? flies by. That's a real street, by the way, every street. And back in 1999, we made a real promise to reduce the risk of fire to every home and every street. And here we are, the promise kept. The lowest fire injury and death figures on record, the safest our communities have ever been. No coincidence that, just hard work and determination. The big decision behind all this effort was to put resources from fighting fires into preventing fires. It's been a 10 year journey, and one which required real commitment from everyone involved. You only have to go back to the 80s and 90s to see that working for a fire service was pretty one dimensional. You see, when I started, I even got congratulated for being posted to a busy station. A busy station, think about it. In simple terms, it meant a community in trouble. In the mid-90s, the BBC did a series about firefighting. They needed to go where they get the pictures. Drama and danger makes for good telly, doesn't it? But we didn't let the viewers down. 200 people died in fires on Merseyside during that decade. God knows how many more were injured. In the grand scheme of things, we were doing an amazing job saving lives and property. But there comes a point where you think, there's got to be a better way than this. We've spent the last 50 years putting out fires, with very little energy or time trying to prevent them. The time had come to do something radical, and that meant doing this, going out into the communities, stepping out onto the streets, full uniform and all, and actually talking to people. Because what we realised was, unless we could get ourselves out into the streets, into every street, and start helping people to protect their homes, then nothing would change. Okay, just give me the address. Okay, just calm down. We had a sleepover, the kids' friends were staying. The fire alarm went off, up the upstairs fire alarm. And then Dave would come bursting in, screaming fire. And I ran towards it, telling the kids to come with me to get them down the stairs. I've never seen nothing like it, it's like a bonfire. Can you get, can you get them all out? Hello? Yes, yes, yes! Yeah, can you get the children out? The year before, the fire brigade had gone to St Matthew's school and gave Jessica the form and you go round your family, whatever, and say, do you need fire alarms? And, but they'd also showed her how to protect yourself in a way in the fire. She'd remembered that information the firemen had given her. So everybody would have been trapped upstairs. If that fire alarm wouldn't have gone off, we wouldn't have got out. Well, as you can see, it didn't take long before we could see some differences. Even so, I'm not going to pretend everything ran smoothly from the start. Do had a few snacks. For instance, we realised that not every door was being opened to us. And it soon became obvious to reach many of the most vulnerable, we'd need to think and work in wholly new ways. The thing is, you know the old saying, you can lead a horse to water. Even in an ordinary street like this, there's going to be some people you just can't connect with. For whatever reason, unable to hear the doorbell, unable to get to the door, no phone, worried about opening the door, the list goes on. But when we began to analyse the reasons why we weren't reaching some sections of our communities, we realised something crucial in this whole exercise. It was the most vulnerable people who were likely to slip under the radar, and yet it was the same social group who were most at risk. So we were going to have to do something about it. Just knocking on doors, wasn't going to get the whole job done. By working with other agencies to prevent fires instead of just passing the mess on to them after one, it made us open our eyes and we could see we had a lot to learn. And being honest enough to admit we didn't have the knowledge or skills yet to deal with the really vulnerable, we were bold enough to go and get the people who did. Our first advocates concentrated on our older residents and those whose language or culture posed a barrier to us making them safer. The aim was to keep older people safe from fire, make them far more aware of the risks and the safety measures that they could take. 
Sometimes some of the things people might be perhaps not closing a door just because the handles are stiff. Then in that case I can get a, a handy person out and the, the repair. Any, sometimes it's only silly little tiny things that can make such a difference. These are vulnerable people we're talking about and to gain access to these people is the main major area. I'm getting this satisfaction that I've been able to help someone change their life. Knock on the door, um, two fire officers, have you got a smoke alarm? And came in, fitted it, we had a bit of a natter and they explained that the fire and rescue service had an advocate system for older people and vulnerable people. About a week later I got a phone call from Maureen and um, she came around, we had a good long natter and it, we, we found out that we were entitled to a lot of stuff that we just didn't know about. And from Maureen's initial visit, we've had social services, a warm front, windows from the local authority, Sefton carers, and things that we just didn't know that we should be getting. And it's all down to the initial visit from the two fire officers, fitting smoke alarms. So all in all, it's turned our lives around quite considerably. It took a while for some of us to realise the difference that advocates could make. And I suppose for a while we took for granted the role of volunteers and Fire Service Direct. There was a lot of change going on. But I guess when the first Beacon Award was achieved, we knew we were onto something. Across the country, nobody else was doing home fire safety checks. But the reality of it was that it was working. We were getting into people's homes and we were making people not only safer, but feeling safer. We're here to complement the work that they do, so we need to know the strategy of the Fire and Rescue Service so that we can be a big part of the fire safety within Merseyside. I think you find that most firefighters would agree that the majority of house fires are caused by a combination of smoking and alcohol use. After the initial home fire safety check, if there's any concerns from the firefighters, they will refer their findings to me and uh, see if I can go in and reduce the risks even further. No matter how long they've been smoking for, there's all sorts of agencies out there that we can uh, refer them into, such as the, the Roy Castle Lung Foundation and there's the personal health trainers as well. As regards alcohol or drug use, again, there's a, there's a lot of agencies within the Liverpool city centre area. The knock-on effect will be a reduced risk of accidental house fires, which will increase our firefighters' safety. I'm working with a gentleman in St Helens at the moment who's extremely vulnerable. He was referred from the drug and alcohol advocate um, because of his vulnerability. We've given him things like bed and packs, bins, throws, everything really. But we just still couldn't reduce the risk. He was a victim of hate crime a little while later so we've we opted to a full suppression system. The crew, they identify whether they're hard of hearing or deaf and they refer onto the deaf advocate because we've got more experience. There had been a home visit that I did with um, an elderly gentleman. He didn't know where to go about getting a hearing aid back. We had to go back out and let him know we'd made the appointment for him and transport had been daughter. He was over the moon for that and to be able to do that as well at home by a theatre track and providing him a deaf alarm, I could go home thinking that I've done a satisfactory job. Our role in the task force was to reduce arson in the community. The major problem we'd have with one of these properties is it would obviously be a breach in security of the properties and the chances are by the time the call comes in it would spread to another property and possibly another one as well. And the difficulty for firefighters then is that they'll be attending to put a raging fire out with the associated risks involved. Starting the role as an antisocial behaviour advocate, I got given the task of uh, hoax calls and trying to reduce hoax calls. Uh, we work quite closely with the, the local media, the radio, the, the local newspapers, and uh, over the last two years we've seen a massive reduction of approximately 47% in hoax calls. I think we've had successes in all areas uh, in terms of what we deal with. We've had an attack on a fire crew and we've been out, we've viewed the CCTV from the fire engine, we've picked up a good footage, we've been out and spoken to the community, which has led to us working with the police and catching someone, bringing them to justice. It's a good feeling to go home and think that you're doing that job. 
The role of the Asylum Seeker and Refugee Advocate is to work with the various different groups to reduce the risks of them having a fire and it was just about um, spending time in community centres, talking to people. In Bailey Course there was an incident where the pan went on fire and it actually ended up being quite a serious fire but since that happened we've done a lot of work with the accommodation centres. Every couple of weeks we go around there to do talks with the occupants just to give back up to the staff who are already working there about the importance of fire safety. We become conditioned to think the social issues, such as poverty and lifestyle choices, especially around smoking and alcohol, were things beyond our influence. Unsolvable, if you like. You spent to too many jobs, I suppose. It wasn't just the knowledge. The other crucial thing the advocates brought was time. They had the time to look at the higher risks and get things done. Time that we just can't guarantee. time. Lots of it taken up going to jobs caused by young kids. Listen, don't get me wrong, I was no angel as a kid, but trying to open the door to some of these, it was locked, wedged and nailed down. We weren't going to tackle this problem with advocates alone. Firefighters had to get out there and get involved. They even put some of us in a film. There's over 100,000 young adults living across Merseyside, so let's get things into perspective for a minute. There's only a tiny fraction of these who are causing us real problems. 10 or 20 years ago, we would have passed the book, let someone else sort it. Things were changing. We were reaching out to every street, every resident, remember. The schools were a great starting point. We needed to get the kids thinking about the firefighters. The ordinary men and women behind the uniform. After all, many of us were living in the very communities we were serving. We needed to remind everyone that behind the firefighter's mask is a real person. As I said, this was a decent starting point. The trouble is, our work in the schools felt a bit like our work at an incident. You know, you get a call, you turn up, do your job and you leave. We decided to take things to another level. If we were serious about engaging with young people, we had to communicate with them regularly and consistently. That meant going into schools, staying there. Not every firefighter wants to go back to school. And let's be real, we're not going to catch every kid in school. I catch him here though. The thing is, it's important that once we're involved, we stay involved. Schools, sports clubs, any organisations working with young people were starting to look at how firefighters could support or lead their projects. And the job? They just let us get on with it and find out for ourselves what was possible. The roots of antisocial behaviour run deep for many of these kids. I know we can't be there all the time and change everything, but we are there. And we are making a difference. Proof of that for me was when we achieved the second Beacon Award for Early Intervention, Children at Risk. It wasn't the award itself, it was the interest that followed from other fire services, children's services and charities. It was like they were really waking up to what Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service could offer. We've got over a hundred people working with young people every day now. So what do the kids think? I think with the firefighters getting involved, I think it, I think it really makes it better. But being a firefighter is great, he saved lives, but being a coach as well is just amazing. It's great because you go straight from being a fireman to being working with us and gives up his time. Be honest. If it wasn't for these dead giveaways, you'd never even thought you were in a fire station. But this one is right in the heart of the community. Right in the centre where it matters. And we're building more just like this one. 
You see, the more time we spend out there, the more opportunities there are for people to come in here. I'm just about old enough to remember that we weren't always as welcoming. But 10 years ago, when we promised a home safety check for every home and every street, it changed the way we looked at the job. And now with the lowest fire, death and injury statistics on record, we know for certain that we took the right path. We've achieved what we set out to do, to reduce the risk of fire in every street. And along the way achieved so many other things too. The third and most recent Beacon Award for reducing health inequalities shows that we not only understand the wider social issues that affect our communities, but that we've got some solutions too. To be perfectly honest, it looked like a derelict property. Not on this particular door, two up and two down, terrace property. And this little old lady opened the door and, and a, a man's face came through and he said, uh, what do you want? We immediately knew that there was a problem. She invited us into her home and we had a discussion about safety in the home and it was challenging because there were some language barriers there. First thing I noticed, no doors on the downstairs. Nothing on the walls, water on the floor. There was a hole in the ceiling in the lounge. It was like going back in time. It was like pre-war. She was heating her house with uh, propane heaters. We found open fires throughout. An old fashioned 30 year old cooker. The big factor for me as well was she had six kids and it turned out the 15 year old was setting fireworks off inside the house. I had to constantly reassure him and see how we could help him. It turns out he was setting rockets and Roman candles off. The woman broke down, she became quite distraught. So we installed our smoke detectors, we tried to get our message across if you like in terms of safety in the home and the issues around the kitchen. So the two firefighters that came in with me automatically went to the two lads, separated them out. We give her the advice, fitted the smoke alarms. We calmed them all down, we brought them together. It was quite good because you could see that we'd actually got through to them, especially the lad. We felt there was, there was more that we could possibly do by getting in touch with other agencies. So I said, look, if you let me, I'll involve social services and there's all kinds of um, help they can give. I think it's one of the biggest transformations that I'd seen. When we went back, she was living in much better conditions and, and we felt that we'd improved the quality of life. Every, everything that we could, we got in place. We, we, we managed to achieve within a very short space of time. And she's obviously safer, a lot safer now than what she was before we made the visit. Six weeks later, we turn up and there on the lawn, there's, there must have been 10 or 12 people. Everybody had got out of that house prior to that incident escalating. That for me could have been a real tragedy. If we hadn't gone in there and it was those smoke detectors that got those people out of that house. 400,000 homes visited, more and more people protected, and a real sense that we've become part of the community we serve. We couldn't have done it without the assistance of so many partners, local authorities, housing associations, primary care trusts, the police, there's too many to name, and of course, our fantastic staff. The last 10 years have brought a lot of challenges but the greatest challenge was to stop fire deaths and injuries to the people out there. The depth's right. We couldn't have done it by ourselves. And to be honest, there's still more to be done. You never know. When my time's done, I might get congratulated for being at the quieter station. What do you reckon? It's been over a decade of achievement that we can all be incredibly proud of. I know I am. But we can't be complacent. We have to keep pushing forward. We have to keep being innovative. But we have to also recognise the part that in the future will be played by the health agenda and the environmental agenda so that we can make every street, every home, every person in Merseyside protected now and in the future. <laughs>